In today's lesson, we are still solving one-step equations, but let's make it a little more interesting. We have word problems that we have to solve, and all of them involve three steps. We have to first define the variable. That means you pick a variable and you state what it represents. Here's an example for a problem. Maybe we decide that we're going to use the variable x, and that, let's say, x represents the hours worked in a week. So that's how you define a variable. Now, to write an equation, it might look like something, um, let's say we have, we make $8 an hour. So $8 times every hour that we work, and let's say in a week we make $80. So we would be solving for how many hours did we work. And then if you solve it, you would divide both sides by 8 to get x equals 10. So this is just a made-up example, but just so you understand the three steps. Define a variable, you have to write the equation, and then solve it. So three things for every problem. Let's say that one-third of the bagels in a bakery are sesame bagels. And then there are 72 sesame bagels. Define a variable, then write and solve an equation to find how many bagels there were in the entire bakery. All right, so remember there are three steps. We have to first define the variable. So let's look at the question. They're asking how many bagels. So whatever question they're asking, that's where our variable comes in. So B stands for bagels. Now, you don't have to use the letter B. It really doesn't matter. If you want to use X for all of them, that is fine. And I actually like X better because my Bs will look like sixes sometimes. So now let's write the equation. Here we have one-third. So that's the fraction, one-third. And the word of means multiply. So one-third times the number of bagels in the bakery. Well, that's our variable. So one-third times x. And then they're saying that um, there are 72 sesame bagels. And one-third of the total is... 72. There are, there is, so that's your equal sign, 72. So one-third of the total equals 72, and now solve for x. So to solve for x, we need to multiply both sides by its reciprocal. So one-third x equals 72. The reciprocal is 3. So x equals 216. So we've done three things. Define the variable, write the equation, and solve the equation. Here's our second example. The Parker family drove a total of 180 miles on their road trip. This distance is 1.5 times the distance they drove on the first day. How many miles did the Parker family drive on the first day? All right, so first thing, define the variable. And you always look at the question. The question is, how many miles did the Parker family drive on the first day? So let's say our variable is m this time. So m equals not just miles, but miles on the first day. And now that we've defined our variable, we have to write the equation. So let's go back. It says the Parker drove a total of 180 miles on their road trip. The distance is 1.5 times the distance they drove on the first day. So we have 1.5 times the distance they drove on the first day, which is our variable. So 1.5 times m gives you the total miles of the vacation, which is 180. 
And now, to solve it, we have to divide both sides by 1.5. So m equals 120. That means on the first day, they drove 120 miles. So just to recap, remember you have to define the variable, write the equation, and solve it. LaToya softball team won 75% or 18 of its total games. Define a variable, then write and solve an equation to determine the number of games the team played. Alright, this one um, is worded a little different. It says LaToya softball team won 75% of its games. So you could think 75% of the total games, or that represents 18 games. So then, look at the last bit. It says, determine the number of games the team played. So what we're solving for, that's what we have to first define our variable. So let's say g, and that represents we're solving for total games. And then to write the equation, they're saying 75% of the total games is 18. So 75% of the total amount of games played would be 18, because they won 18. So now let's write that as an equation. 75%, well we have to write that as a decimal, which is 0 0.75 of means time, so times g and then is is equals 18. So now we just have to solve it by dividing both sides by 0.75. And when you divide 18 by 0 0.75, you get 24. So they played a total of 24 games, which means if they won 75% of 24, they should get 18. So to find the variable, write the equation, and solve it. Here's our last example. Joe used two-fifths of his savings to buy $250 headphones. How much did he have in his savings before purchasing the headphones? Alright, so we have two-fifths of his savings. So two-fifths of his savings is... $250, because he had to pay $250 of the headphones, which represents two-fifths of the total savings. So, let's look at the question. It says, how much did he have in the savings? So, that's our variable, the money in his savings. And now we have to write an equation. Well, we have two-fifths of means multiply and two-fifths of his savings, and our savings is our variable, so two-fifths x is two hundred and fifty dollars. So now we have to solve it, and when we have a fraction out in front we're multiplying, we have to multiply by the reciprocal. So here, fraction cancels out and we're left with x equals, and when we're going to multiply, you can do two-fifty times five, and then divide it by 2. So 250 times 5 is 1,250, and then we have to divide that by 2, which equals $625. So, to find the variable, write the equation, and this is saying that his total savings was $625, and he had to spend two-fifths of his savings to buy the headphones at $250. So there's your full lesson, one-step equations, but with word problems, making real-life examples with these equations. Good luck with the lesson.